Hello everybody, welcome. Come on in, it's lovely to see you again. My name is James Sale. This is Canto 6 of Hell Ward. You will remember we've been to the hospital in Canto 1. We visited my mother in hell in Canto 2. In Canto 3, we've come across an ex-pupil of mine. In Canto 4, an ex-boss of mine. And in Canto 5, we started this journey where we've seen a false friend. And in Canto 6, we're going to see another one going back even further. And in Canto 7, even further still. Before I start the reading, I just want to say, answer an inquiry that I've actually had from somebody on the Facebook page, which said, is this going to be in book form? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. We're hoping within the next fortnight, Hellward, the book, will be available. Certainly within the next month, but we're hoping within the next fortnight. If you are interested in ordering a copy, do say so on the Facebook page. We will try and expedite everything so that you have the information as soon as we possibly do. So thank you for your interest in it. So here we go. Hell Ward, Canto 6, College Friend. But such protection as I wanted then was not to be in this zone I was in, heavy as it was with the stench of men, and human nature starved of love and thin, deprived, denied, denying, wholly set on self-assertion at all costs to win. And these, it seemed, my friends, or once were that, Remember, I thought, how David once had had his Jonathan, two souls which truly met beyond the love of women, if that could be, which, after all, I didn't think so, for man needed woman not to be mad. As I thought this, another thought came too, but from a deeper source, a different place, and not my head, which knew it didn't know. Instead, my heart, a star formed with a face, shining with brilliance that purified, so that I pause, dumbstruck, with grace on grace. Thus, Dante turned to see me, who had died almost. But now, the corridor was lit, a head from light, my own being supplied. No, Dante said, the grace is all of it. To waver one moment is to quench this flame, which out of you now flickers but a bit. Imagine when, finally, we have come beyond this lair to where your true love is. There you'll find the white stone that has your name. At that point only, life. I heard his words, and more hope flared within a while. But then, more sanguine, took a dive, as grace felt lost, as if submerged by time, and darkness held its sway again. But still, I felt his presence closer now, the friend, him who'd been before, and for my sake made trial once more. So courage, too, I found makes light as we moved on, the dark seemed less the while. We passed stale products of sickness, its plight, abandoned mattresses stacked to the walls, sheets, pillows, surgical objects of right, a litter of rubbish, till a small hall opened, and within, slight three-sided screens, each one a world for someone and their gall aligned themselves, contained a space, a scene, playing a future contained in each past, from one smoke rose in waves of nicotine. I heard a sloven cough, perhaps to ask would be polite, but something in the sound alerted me. Who was it I'd unmask? Like some consultant doing his ward round, 
stepping aside from Dante as I did, I drew the curtain there, splayed on the ground, bed vacant, Saul sat, listless and sad. Beside a heap of empty bottles, cans, dead fags and packets, litanies of bad habits that litter earth like specks of sand, sterile in their numberless magnitude. And here they were laid out, as if a plan, as if he thought for him, Saul, this was food. How wasted, grey, he looked, and dozily, now eyeing me, confused, not sure what mood best served his purpose, but veering to Frosty, curtly, he addressed me. James, his speech slurred, what took you so long? You'll never beat me. With that, so satisfied with what he'd heard, namely his own voice, he took a long swig. He'd beaten me to hell as he preferred to be the winner, and I simply to shrug, as back then, long ago, I had. Ignored the evidence of every action's thuggery, and how he'd swerved to crush whatever soared in human spirit without benefit to him. Because for him, all hope despaired, and none must be allowed their faith in it. No hope, no faith, and now in hell, no love. No understanding either, I don't fit this place. My passing is through and from above, which is what he will not and cannot see. Acknowledge what I, always through grace, have. That soul's original identity. That likeness whereby what was to begin impressed its properties on you, on me, which was not love, not power, and sure not knowing. For what flashed forth created made pure light in one decisive call, one final showing of creativity and its delight. Remember how my soul aches for that state again. And as I thought so, so my brightness glowed once more. Saul blinked, disconsolate, blinded, unsure what such a surge might mean. But bitterness, aware his own dark fate around him, lost without a single gleam, retorted in his rage, You never will, James, never, for what you have never been's creative. Then saying so, took a swill and a long, satisfied sigh from his sup, almost a burp, emerged. Then all was still. I stood transfixed a while, tortured and strapped to the terrible torment of his words, which, supposing they were true, wounded and racked my soul. As long ago, playing the bard before the king, felt the full force of spear attempt to fix him there, take him off guard, undo ten thousand things he'd done. I swear pure jealousy. But worst of all, the text made clear the one Saul sought was nowhere near. Indeed, to Saul was now a disconnect that never again would power his life for good. But through the end or which would vex him bitterly and lead him to his grief. Now my own soul sat drunk and speaking hard words trained at killing, cutting as a knife. My soul, this friend of mine, what had I heard? Judgment curbing all my possibilities, destined to be with my own past interred forever. To end like him, he like me, and this the game, end game, that was his aim. No friendship then in this, but company to join him in the ward and blot my name. Knowing, believing so, fulfilled itself. Standing there already too long a time, I felt paralysis creeping through half my frame. I looked down, forced myself to view his face. There. A slight smile, almost a laugh, like one I saw invade, immerse, imbue my mother's face when I escaped, but just her ward creased his lips. For now he knew his power, as mine diminished, light gone bust. But 
feeling less, my torso now felt more. Like blisters erupting, liquid then crust, hardening my skin to scales, inward to core. As it did, diminishment taking hold, so he abruptly staggered from the floor, no longer mild and mocking drunk, but bold. A giant whose face contorted with bleak rage, like Polyphemus, I trapped in his fold. Two eyes became one, nothing would assuage, except my whole being joined him in hell. Like some rookie actor on the big stage, as the lights go up, no longer feels well and suddenly freezes in the spotlight, spectators expecting, but not this spell. So now, frozen in myself and in blight, unable to resist, Saul reaches out. His touch means not hello, more like good night. My scales already grey and grey as grout, render me brick-like, rigid, rigid as a stack, astoned by friendship, rooted in doubt, and having come this far, no going back. I try to parry, raising my left hand, which moves like some ant in glue, straining, stuck, as in slow-mo, each move can scarce expand, while his are brisker, faster than a fish, whisking away from danger, nearing land. He grabs my index finger. With one crush, I hear it crack and howl, I howl with pain. Like me, he grins, not brick, but feel your flesh. His grin, a grimace with more threat in train. What next? His beer breath right up in my face. I addled with a hard-boiled egg for brain. Fears come on us, so rooted in place, defence impossible. Who am I now to be here, lost and die, without a trace as atheists, as those who never know the truth? What white stone then might I inherit? What place left for me so fallen, so low, and utterly without virtue merit? My knees folded downwards as he above me waxed immense and vaunted victory, credit. Ye see, he cried, eyes blazing, him the gov. Ye thought ye were so clever, didn't ye, James? Ye didn't reckon on how strong I'd prove. Yeah, me, ye dumb pillock, and Saul's my name. His two thumbs raised, about to plot my eyes, and leave me blinded with him and in shame. But as his thumbs rose and all seemed goodbye, yet there in the corner Dante stood and smiled, like not even bothering. My mind thought, why? He'd be my mentor, father to this child. So how observe now my blinding this way? Why? Why? The question self just drove me wild, and as I raged within, so without the clay, cement I had become, became aware of something, nothing, living and in play. So that Saul's thumb seemed suspended, set there, and I at last, in the wide interval, unfroze and found myself creating prayer. The word, the name came, some power spiritual that Saul could not imagine or conjure. The floor sliding, sloping back to hell, a deeper hell than we were in for sure. And Saul's footing slipped, his face went berserk, demonic, wanting to have me secure, to put me down beneath a thicker murk or deeper depth than his own blackness owned. No glory shines there, and no goodness works. As from my knees, grace strengthened me to stand. I saw his twofold fear, envy unsatisfied, finally not to have me as he planned. Worse, the tilting floor, opening wide, a hole behind him with no seeming base, where those denying others were denied. There it was, pure panic blotching Saul's face. Now Dante moved, as I tilting headlong, weakened by Saul, and nowhere there was safe. First, bed and screens toppled like matchsticks flung into a dark bin, then disappeared, gone. But Dante saved me, one word on his tongue, jump which I did with all I could summon, yet twisting as I did, having to turn to see one last time, Saul gripped by his daemon. There, hair uprising in its grey perm burn, eyes bloodshot wide, erasing all his whites, mouth shifting from curse to some mad, mute mourn. His body 
half floating, held like a kite, some upward draught, then down and lost in night. Thank you for listening.